Welcome back to Tim's Garage. I'm finally happy. We've managed to get a better microphone, and I think it's going to help with all of the sound uh, messages that I've been getting where people are complaining about the echoing and the quality of the sound. So hopefully this microphone solves that, and we'll have better audio for the rest of the videos as we go forward. That said, I finally have the turbocharger out of the car. So there was a, it was quite an ordeal to get that thing out. I, I wasn't in any hurry, so I only did it a little at a time. But one of the, the key things to point out is the very first thing you need to do is drain the coolant. You need to make sure that you pull all the coolant out of the car because the coolant, uh, once you undo the cooling lines that are attached to the turbo, tends to dump all over your floor. And if you've got a floor like what I've got, it's a little irritating when you got to mop it all up. So I managed to get it all mopped up. I've got a little drain pan with the coolant that I managed to salvage, but I'm going to wind up reusing and putting some fresh coolant in to make up the difference. I'll also use something called an airlift device to be able to uh, uh, restore the cooling system and not have any of the airlocks that are normally located in it. So I'll, I'll go through the, that process when I top it all up. Now, I, I wound up getting this off and there was a certain sequence to it that I want to talk about. The first thing was uh, getting the catalytic converter out. And the first thing I did after getting the coolant drain was to uh, drop the lower exhaust off the bottom of the catalytic converter. And once I dropped the lower exhaust off of it, there was also a retaining bracket that bolts to the engine from the catalytic converter. And I removed that as well. Once I had the retaining bracket off and the exhaust dropped down, I also removed an additional brace that runs to the base of the turbo to this uh, fastener that is, no, it's, it's difficult to see it. It goes to this fastener right here. So there's a little bolt stud that's right there and you need to remove that brace as well. So there's one, one bolt that's on the base of the uh, turbo that sort of supports the turbo. Once I had that all loose, I wound up with the challenge of getting all the bolts out of the top of the catalytic converter. And one of the one of the bolts is particularly hard to reach and that's this bolt right here. So I went out and I managed to uh, find myself a 15 millimeter extra long gear wrench. In this case I, I got a gear wrench and it's got a ratcheting end and it's got a fixed end and you'll notice there's no offset to it. It's a flat straight offset wrench. What that allowed me to do was to be able to put this in here and they were clocked perfectly so that if I didn't have enough reach this way. I could flip the wrench over and it indexed it and I had enough reach here. I was able to uh, get this on the nut and crack it loose and once I had it loose, I used the ratcheting end of the wrench and I was able to, in short order, get the, get the nut off of the, uh, the bottom of the catalytic converter. That was probably the hardest bolt to get undone. Once I had all the bolts out of it, um, I, uh, while I still had it sitting on the studs, I also removed the uh, O2 sensor. Uh, you needed to have a little bit of mechanical, mechanical advantage to be able to crack the O2 sensor loose, so I uh, took advantage of that while I was still located in the vehicle, cracked it loose and was able to remove it. Uh, once I had the O2 sensor out, I then tried to get this whole piece down out of the car, and what I found is that it's extremely tight and there wasn't quite enough room to pull it out the bottom of the car. In talking with uh, Dion at uh, RPM Motorsports, he indicated that on the Sky, for some reason, it's just a little bit tighter than on the GXP. I'm not sure why that seemed to be his impression. So what I wound up doing is undoing the bottom of the uh, uh, passenger side motor mount and raising the motor up about two inches to be able to take this and have enough room. And with about two to three inches of uh, lift on the engine, just on the right hand side, it seemed to have just enough room to have this slide back off the studs, drop down, and where I had to turn it 90 degrees against the engine to be able to have it come down any further. And I have a, an image of that I'll include in the, in the video clip. With that uh, turn 90 degrees, I was able to snake it down just a little bit further and then I believe I turned it 90 degrees again and then pulled it out like this out of the car and it was out. And I'll have to reverse that order to be able to put it back up into the car when I'm done. 
Once the catalytic converter was out, all of a sudden there was all kinds of room to be able to remove the fasteners on the turbo. So I managed to remove all the fasteners that, that mount the turbo right here uh, to, the, to the exhaust manifold on the vehicle. And of course, one of the things you're going to need is a, a new gasket to be able to uh, reinstall this back on the vehicle. And I'll ensure a, an image of the part number of this particular gasket. And in, in getting this turbo off, one of the challenges I had, and, and everybody has this challenge, is this damn hose from hell. This is the uh, PCV hose, and all it does is it's a vacuum hose, but it's a braided steel hose because of the heat, and they want to make sure that it's going to live. So it's a fairly durable hose, but it is almost impossible to remove with any kind of tooling. I tried to use a very shallow... Um, uh, fuel line release here and I could not get it to release there it just wasn't happening so I um, since I couldn't remove it I found out that these hoses were about $25 I just made the decision I was gonna screw with it I did undo this uh, the uh, the mount itself and try to remove it uh, from the actual turbo and I got it out about an eighth of an inch and in trying to pry it out I recognized that it looked like I was going to deform the plate, and I thought, well, I don't know how these things are constructed, so I didn't want to yank it out. So instead, I cut it off up here and uh, pulled the little spring clip out. Where is the spring clip? Pulled the little the little four-tang spring clip out so that I was able to actually uh, remove the hose. And I'll just, I have a new one coming, and I'll include an image and the part number of that hose for about $25 uh, in the video. All right, so when I've got that, uh, you got that image and the part number. So with that said, I called Dion at uh, RPM Motorsports, and what Dion was telling me is that this particular hose just pulls out. And one of the challenges I had is it just didn't seem like it was going to pull out. And he said, what you have to do is work it really hard back and forth and keep pulling, because what you have to do is you have to break the seating of this blue O-ring, this uh, Viton O-ring, you have to break that seal because it gets cooked to the bore of the turbo and seizes against there. The movement you're feeling in it is simply the O-ring moving up and down inside this little groove that's cut for it. So you have to keep working it, but the easy way for anyone else doing one of these turbo installs is to pull off this particular fitting and then just reuse this whole line. I had tried so hard working on this that I, I felt as though I had damaged the uh, the O-ring in here and decided, okay, I, I've jacked with it enough. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna purchase a new one. So that's what I did. Now, once I got the turbo off, I had to swap over some of the components, and I've started to swap them over. And I swapped over the hoses and then the uh, blow-off valve switch. And this is another connector that you need to make sure you undo on the base of the turbo when you go to pull this off of the vehicle. Make sure that's disconnected. Now to give you an idea of, of the differences between the GM turbo and the, uh, the big wheel remachined re turbo, here's a, a view of the impellers. And you can see the one on the left, the GM turbo. If you look in there, you can see the way the impeller looks and how the bore looks and it's... Uh, a fairly compact bore but when you look over on the the one on the right this one here you can see how it's been machined out a little bit larger it's been uh, tapered the actual uh, port has been tapered much more uh, uh, gradually and you can see the different design of the impeller that's in there it's got a billet impeller and it's got quite a bit of a different design in the impeller design which allows that impeller to spool up much much faster and uh, it it really does it obviously moves very freely it's super nice now i'm super happy with what we're going to be putting on and a couple of things that i noticed when i took off my gm turbo is that on this gm turbo when we look at it on the turbo housing at 8,000 miles it's already got a crack in it and and i it was pretty common the turbo i sent for rebuilding to rpm had a crack in it as well and uh, Martin Scott over there decided to send me one without a crack. But this is a common occurrence. It doesn't affect performance. 
But again, this is only has 8,000 miles on this particular turbo and it's already cracked. Now, as I'm going through and doing this, you'll need to transfer all of these uh, studs over or uh, Martin suggested to me to just order these because they're a dollar a piece or a couple dollars a piece. So I've ordered new studs. I'm not gonna bother trying to remove these and reuse them. So I've got these four studs I need to do and then I've got this one stud for that lower brace that needs to be replaced into the new turbo. I'm just gonna uh, put new studs in and not have to worry about getting the other ones out. Then the last thing I need to do is replace this uh, oil return liner. I'm just gonna go ahead and replace it. I've got a new gasket for the upper portion of the uh, oil line. But I'm not gonna replace this O-ring because again, it's only got 8,000 miles on this O-ring down here. So I'm just gonna wind up reusing it. I also purchased some additional heat sleeve and I'm going to be uh, I'm going to be covering up some of the tubes and things with additional heat sleeve once I've got it all apart before I go and put things back together. So there you have it. The turbo's off. I've almost got all the components and when they arrive um, I'll uh, get started on getting them all installed and swapped over and getting this ready to bolt back into the vehicle. Right now I'm waiting for a gasket and uh, yeah for a gasket. The other thing I need to clarify is whether I'm going to be using the uh, same factory type uh, ring gasket or whether I'm going to use a copper gasket. And I have both and I'm not quite sure which one I want to use but the dead soft copper I've used in the past and they work fairly well but I want to make sure that uh, that makes total sense before I go and, and use that as my uh, my gasket material. So I'll be uh, checking that out very carefully before I do that. Uh, that said, one last thing is Milwaukee has come out with these wonderful little wrenches. This is an electric ratchet and this thing works fantastic. So uh, if you don't have air tools, uh, electric tools are becoming super good to use. This is an M12 uh, lithium powered ratchet. Pretty compact, works really well, and this is what I use to pull the, uh, the turbo off the car. Uh, so I'll come back to you when I go to reinstall all this, and I'll try and show you the stages that I reinstall things as I move forward. But right now, we've got everything off the vehicle, and uh, the engine is completely bare. and I'm ready to be able to go and install the new turbo on it. So please like and share the video, and I'll be back at you with some additional video once I'm able to uh, start installing the turbo. Bye for now.